We all know how your price cuts can be either a blessing or a curse. Well, today you're going to hear the story about how they can be absolutely sh**. So, hello and welcome to episode 3 of Pokemath, where this week we're going to look at the surprises in your prices. And, well, let's get straight to it. So, first off, we're going to like look at what are we actually trying to answer today. Well, we're looking at exactly what is the probability that I price a certain card, or more specifically, we can also say, more generally actually, what's the probability that I price a certain number of cards. So, well, let's get into it, right? So... First of all, a little history lesson, guys. So I don't know how many of you were around at that time, but otherwise, do you remember this particular picture? Well, for those of you who don't really remember it, this is the picture of John Kettler pricing three Rowlets in the second game in a regionals finals. And then you could start saying that, well, that's highly unlikely, but fact is it does happen. And what we're gonna be looking at today is what is the exact probability of this particular thing happening? And Next to that, we also have a second example here, like where it's not only three rounds you can price, you can also price three of... Thing for both players, actually. Yeah. In fact, both, both decks are decks that would like to have access to their prize cards. Three welders, indeed. So this is a footage of me playing against Tord Redcliffe. You mean the one Tord, right? At round four at the regionals this season in Cologne, was it, if I remember correctly? Both 3-0 and then, well... I open my game one with pricing beautifully three welders. You can all guess how that game go went, but okay. So we're going to be looking at what's the probability of actually this happening, right? So but then we can look into first before we actually discuss the probability here. There's one thing we had to get out of the way. That is, does the probability of getting a certain card price depend on your opening hand? In other words, Thus, it really matter whether I would draw my seven cards in my opening hand first or place my price cards first. We all know in the rules of the game, you have to draw your opening hand first, check for basic, and then after you've done that, you can then put your price cards down. However, in terms of calculation for probability, the answer is actually no. In other words, because the cards that you select from your deck, the seven cards that you draw are random, if they are not random, that is, you'll be selecting them, then you'll be cheating. Mm -hmm. Don't, don't go not that. So in order to fill in on that here, what I'm trying to say is, it, for calculating the probability, it doesn't matter which order we do it because the cards are selected randomly. So for the purpose of calculating it today, we're going to just be looking at as if you'll be placing your price cards first. So you'll be taking six cards at the top of your deck and put the price cards before you draw your opening hand. I know in the game we don't do it like that, but in terms of calculating probability, it does exactly the same. Trust me on that. Okay, so how are we actually going to do it? Well. My good old friend, hybrid geometric distribution. And yes, I promise I will not in episode four use the hybrid geometric distribution. Swear, I swear. Don't worry. This will be the last episode for this time that I'll be using the hybrid geometric distribution because I already used it in episode one and two. And if you want a more further explanation on how to read these binomial coefficients that you observe here, well, please uh, look at episode one. Um, link should be somewhere here on the screen above me. Um, but to give you a quick example here, how does this actually work? Well, we first translate this into something a little more user-friendly. So by doing so, then we get this for the specific application. What do I mean here? Well, we're looking at a specific card in your deck. That could be welders or a given card that you're interested in not pricing. Here you'll fill in how many do we have. X will be how many would you price in this case. And then you have the deck size and the cards you draw. And the cards drawn in this case here, we're talking about six, right? Remember? So in this application, it will be six cards you draw to put aside. And that is basically how we're going to be calculating it. So why sit with all this math here? Let's get straight to it with an example, right? So example number one. You're playing that super one-off awesome genius tech card that wins you 100% of the game if you do not price it at the start of your game. Because for whatever reason, you need to get it out as soon as possible. You cannot wait around. Okay. Well, how do we calculate that? Simply plug in the numbers that we need in this case. And what numbers do we need? We are pricing one card. So one tech. We are putting six prices from a 60 card deck. 
and there exists one copy of that card in our deck. Fill in all numbers, you get 10%. Honestly, I did not need the hypergeometric distribution to calculate this, but in order for showing you this simple example here, this will help us generalizing this so you can do it for two, three, four or more or whatever, right? So please bear with me this simple example. It might look like I'm overcomplicating things, but well, 10% in this case, let's get on to it. There is also a second example that we can look at here. So first of all, when we looked at our little history lesson first here, what did John Kettler and I have in common here? Well, we both priced three out of four copies of a given card. I'm making the very strong assumption that I play four welders, I knew that, but I'm all, yeah, the assumption here that John Kettler played indeed four Rowlets. Well, we know that for a fact, but that means I can safely assume that, right? Then the question is, what's the odds of that happening? What's the probability that it actually would happen in a given game? Well, putting in enough, enough numbers here again for the formula, we are pricing three cards for the six price cards we're putting from a 60 card deck, and we have four copies in our deck. Inserting all these numbers here for the binomial coefficients here to calculate that using the hypergeometric distribution, we get 0.22%. And just to give you a quick example here, because I kind of forgot that earlier, like as an example, you can always watch episode one how to read these binomial coefficients, but just for, you know, your, um, your benefit here, you're, for instance, here drawing six from a 60 card deck. So there's 60 distinct objects. That's your 60 cards in your deck. And you're drawing of size six every time. So you're drawing six cards from this stack without replacement. If you had replacement, we would just have a binomial distribution, but that's not the case here. Okay. So with that said, there's one more thing. So I showed you a little video clip of me pricing welders, but that was not all that actually happened. Watch this. Just the welders. Uh, that's a pretty good place to be. Yeah, sure, and he will have them in, in his hand unless he takes a very unfortunate combination. Yeah, of he'd have to take his prize cards in some very weird way. He'd have to hit exactly the what? The Pokemon communication and the Jirachi. Yeah, or and Fini. One of the. Is he it three, right? Hit, yeah, he has you to three. draw three, but you only take two. So if he gets any yeah. combination of these three. Yeah, but yeah, yeah. yeah, let's see. So infinity for knockout. <laughs> so let's see. Actually, I just like maybe Torch deck is just trying to get a price penalty of your opponent because they draw three price cards. <laughs> Sneaky. <laughs> that's that's actually the big brain strategy. You're like, no, nah, I play the like. Why do we play this today? Do you, you, you think it's you good? Like, well, it is kind of good. You mean but to say that this isn't already big brain because he's playing Shin Ninja? No. Ow. He's taken this two. Hurts so much. He's taken two. He did not take any wider from the prize cards, and he looks very angry. <laughs> 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 and he gave he, he gave his prize cards to stare. So indeed, what happened here? Stefan did not only prize free welders; he even drew two cards here, not hitting the welders. Well, so let's for fun just calculate what was the odds of that actually happening, right? So, chance of not hitting the welders when you were drawing two prize cards. Well. Yeah, that can be calculated the following way. Sum is his 20%, but to explain how that goes down is when I drew my first prior card, there's a 50-50, right? There's three welders out of six prizes. That's where we get the 0 0.5 from. Then we have the second draw, and now there's only five cards left, right? But three welders. That means now there's a 40% chance of not hitting the welder here. There's simply two out of five. Because these are independent events, we just multiply their probabilities together and I can then come down with 20% here. So now we have two events also. We have the event of, first of all, me pricing three welders. That was the 0.22% from earlier. But now we also have the 20% of me actually not hitting any of my three welders when I drew my first two price cards, which combined, again, two distinct events. I can multiply the probability because they are yeah, independent. And then we get 0.044%. And did I calculate this correctly? I hope so. Otherwise, please correct me in the comments below. We make mistakes. Shit happens. But okay. What I want to point out is this equals Stefan very sad. So indeed, that's what happens with the game. It's a game. It's a card game. But I'm just showing you here what was the probability of that actually happening. But we're not all here for just seeing how, uh, well, some of you might be here for seeing how unlucky Stefan can be. But we can also generalize all these results here. I made us all a nice little table 
So for the future, you can actually just skip to the video right here, get the table and see what are the probabilities that I price X number of cards, given that I play X number of copies in my deck. And also consequently here, what is the probability of not pricing any? So for instance, we can find back the welders, right? First of all, four welders in my deck, I price three. Here we get the 0.022%. These all in decimal numbers. So you have to multiply them by 100 if you want them in percentage. And another small note, just because there are zeros here doesn't mean the probability doesn't exist. It just means it's very, very small, right? There's not anything for the fourth decimal. I could have extended this, but I'd like to be consistent with four decimals here. And again, we can also find back our 10% here. Consequently, to take another example, suppose that I would indeed not have priced any welders at all, that would happen approximately two thirds of my game, right? Or more precisely, 64.85%. And that's how you would read this table. Well, then we can say, what do we learn today? Well, we can use the hypergeometric distribution again to calculate the probability of pricing X number of cards. That could be your one tech card, for instance, or three out of four rowlets, three out of four welders, you know. And we also learned that Stefan can be very, very unlucky sometimes. And with that said, that concludes today's episode. And until next time. Hey guys, thanks for watching today's episode. I hope you enjoyed it and I hope this could be useful to you. And most of all, I hope you learned something. Please don't forget to like and subscribe my channel to help me grow this channel here. I am um, looking forward to coming back with more videos in the near future. But until then, stay safe and, well, till next time. Thank you.